Welcome back, this is Jenna from McGuire. I thought I would create a card that shows a fun light up feature. You push part of the card and another part of the card lights up. These have become popular lately thanks to a great product that's on the market and I've gotten a lot of emails asking about it. So I decided to give it a try and I liked it, so I thought I'd do a video. So you see the candles here? They're normal in this picture, but when I push the dragon's belly, the candles light up. It's a really fun way to make an interactive card. So I'm gonna go through all the steps. I will tell you that it is a little bit pricey to make these cards, so I really would only do these for special occasions, but boy, is it fun to do. So I'm using a new dragon stamp set from My Favorite Things. It's absolutely adorable. And I'm also using the cake from this older My Favorite Things stamp set. And I'm gonna put those images together. Now this dragon, I thought it would be cute to make it look like he's blowing out the candles instead of blowing fire. And I picked a sentiment from a, yet again, third My Favorite Things stamp set. So I'm going to use three different stamp sets together here. You could do all kinds of things to light up on a card. I decided to do these tiny little candles so you won't see the lights much. You could really be more effective if you use something that's a little bit bigger to light up, and you'll see that in a moment. So I stamped my first images with a Copic Friendly Black ink. This is my favorite thing's black hybrid ink. But I wanted the cloud that the dragon is kind of blowing out the candles with to be lighter. So I'm stamping that with a gray hybrid ink from my favorite things, just so it would be a little more subtle than the black. I'm doing this all onto a die cut that I created from a my favorite things die set. And it creates little slash lines around the square die cut. Now I did Copic coloring for these images. You could do any color th coloring you want. Got my numbers that I used of all the different Copics listed there in case you wanted to do the same coloring. I didn't do anything fancy. I did a little bit of gray and green, green blending on the belly and wings, which is a little bit different. And I did use the colorless blender to kind of erase some of the color in little dots on his back and on his head. That's a fun way to add a little bit of interest to an image. That Copic Zero Colorless Blender Marker like erases the color, so it makes those little dots. After I have everything colored, I'm using my piercer to pierce out each of the little flames on the candle, so you can see through that now. They're tiny holes, but it'll work for what we're doing. Okay, so now we're going to create this light up effect. You need to create a circuit. Now don't let that scare you. It's very easy to do. I use this Chibi Chonics light up kit. So it has everything you need in this kit. And it's really fun to put together. My kids have loved making these with me. In the kit, there are a lot of things. There's a great instruction book with some practice steps. There, is, there are batteries in there. And on one side of the battery, you have a plus, And the other side is a negative. I promise this is easy, so bear with me. There's also copper tape in there. And this is what creates the circuit that will turn the lights on. And then these are the fun little lights. On one side, there's a little plus. On the other side, there's a little minus, which makes it easy. And then you see those letters. They have a Y, an R, and a B. That's the color of light that lights up. So there's red, yellow, and blue in these. So there are different color lights in the kit. You can make a few cards with what comes in the kit, and you can buy additional supplies separately. OK, so I've grabbed a few of these lights. I'm actually going to use two yellow lights on this card but you can create up any kind of circuit that you want. And I promise this is easy, and it's a great learning lesson for your kids too. You can see the little negative and positive on that. Okay, so I'm just gonna have those little candles light up. First thing you need to do is what I call create a house for your battery. This is very easy. All I do is I take some white cardstock, just a scrap piece of cardstock, fold a little strip in half, and then I trim it so that it's just a folded piece around your battery. It doesn't have to be fancy, nobody will ever see it. Now to make things easier on me, I like to mark a plus and a minus on these flaps. So you'll see I put a plus on one side and a minus on the other. Really this will make sense in a moment, but this will help me to figure out which way to put my battery in this folded little house that we've created. This will make sense when we put the circuit together. Okay, so now we need to figure out where to put our battery and where to put our lights. So the battery is what you're going to end up pushing to make the lights come on. So I'm going to put a little mark here through the candles because this is where our lights need to be. So I'm marking onto a piece of white paper below it. And then I'm putting a little mark where I want my battery to be. I want it to be behind his belly so that the person presses the belly of the dragon and the lights turn on. So I'm just kind of doing a circle there just for the area the battery will be. Now that white cardstock that we have there behind it, it's too big for the panel that we have, but I'll trim it down later. So that is the little spot where I want my battery to be. So I need to glue his, the little battery house right on top of that. 
So I'm putting some adhesive on the back of one of the flaps of the house, and I'm going to glue that down right on top of that dot. So I'll position it right on top, and you'll see that it goes right there, and then the battery can sit in there, and it won't move. So that now the battery will be right behind the dragon's belly. That's where we'll push to activate our lights. Okay, so now for the fun part, we get to create the circuit. Now that sounds a little scary, but I promise it is easy because all you have to do is put down some tape. And as crafters, we can handle that. So all we have to do is put down copper tape to create a circuit from the light to the battery. Now this is the copper tape that comes in the package and you can buy more separately if you need to. I like to cut it down the center so that it's narrow. I find it's easier to work with that way and you can put it in tighter areas. So I have two strips ready to go. Now next I'm going to do a little thinking about where to put that copper tape. So I need to connect it from the light to the battery on both sides. So this is the little light, it's a little LED light. I'm putting it right over the dots that we created where our flames will be. And I'm putting two lines, one above and one below, about the width of that little light. So that will be really helpful in putting this together. So I have my two little lines there and I know that my copper tape has to run from those lines to the little battery house. So you just remove the release paper from the back of the copper tape and you just put it down as you would any other tape. I'm going starting at one of those lines, the top line, and I'm just kind of kind of turn it gently as we go around the battery house. Anytime I really want to make a sharp turn, I fold the tape back on itself and then I lay it down at the angle. I find that helps to keep a nice connection. There are a lot of great instructions in the kit if you need to learn more about taking turns or being a little more creative. I wanted to keep this pretty simple. So here you can see I kind of fold it back and then I press it down right where I need to. So one end of this copper tape piece starts over where the light is and the other end stops right on my plus sign. So it's just right there. Now once you have it down, I like to take my bone folder and really press it down onto the paper so we have a nice smooth circuit. So now we have a copper tape running from the light to the plus sign. Now we need to run another copper tape from the other line to the minus sign. So I took the release paper off this one. I'm gonna put this right on top of that line and I'm going to bend this a few times and watch this. I'm gonna go right over the top of the housing and then flip the housing open and end this piece of tape exactly on that minus sign. I find it's helpful to have that plus and minus so I know where to start and stop. So we have two copper tapes that don't cross. One starts at the um, top of where our light will be and ends at the plus, and the other starts at the bottom of where our light will be and ends on the minus. This tape goes down very easily, and especially if you rub it down with a bone folder or with your thumbnail. Okay, so remember that that top tape connects with the plus sign, right? So we need the plus sign of our light to touch that top tape. So remember that's a plus sign there, so I know I need the plus sign of the light up there. The minus sign connects with hit this, so the minus sign goes down there. And again, you look at your little light, it's hard to see here, but there's a plus sign on one side and a minus on the other. The point is actually on the minus side. And I'm going to put that down so that the plus touches the top tape and the minus touches that bottom tape. Just press it down firmly. I'm actually going to put two lights down so I have double light, and I kind of overlap them and it worked just fine. So just I, this will work great as long as you connect the plus side of the battery with the plus side of the lights. It's super easy. Next, you take the plus sign of the battery and line it up with the plus sign in the housing. And when you close that, check it out, the lights go off, which is awesome. So you could put as many lights on the circuit as you want. You could do a night sky on a card. You can do anything you want. Now, all anybody has to do is press that and the lights go on. It's really a fun way to make a fun card. Now there is one more important step, and that is to kind of build more walls around your battery housing. So I haven't actually glued the battery in there. I'm just putting some walls around it so it stays put. This is cra uh, just some craft foam tape, and I'm actually going to do three layers thick of it. The reason I'm doing three layers thick is that I don't want the connection to be made all the time. I only want the connection to be made when somebody pushes it. So I want a little bit of a gap between the top flap of that housing and the battery itself. So I'm building up this craft foam around it so it keeps a little gap in there. So watch as I close the flap on the housing, it only activates when I press it because there's so much craft foam around it. Okay, so now we can glue this card together. So I can go ahead and position this just right so that the lights are right behind those holes that we made in the flames. 
Also, the battery will be right underneath the dragon's belly, and you can test it out as you're doing it. Now, I don't have enough craft foam over underneath there, and I have that white cardstock piece kind of sticking out the side unevenly. So this is what I do. I totally cheat. I just stuff my uh, scissors in there and trim off the excess. Nobody will ever see the back of this. And then I take more craft foam and tuck it into other areas so it's nice and raised all around the card. Now one thing I do want to mention is that when I create a card like this and I give it to somebody, I put a little note inside the card that says, hey, be sure to press the dragon's button or dragon's belly for a fun surprise. And that way they know to go ahead and press it so that it lights up. Okay, so I did put some more craft foam in there to make it evenly raised. And all I'm going to do is stick this onto a note card. Here you can see when I press the dragon's belly, the flames light up. Keep in mind, I created tiny little holes for those lights. You could create much bigger holes and see more of the light or even put it behind vellum. I recommend punching a small hole with a hole punch and putting the light behind that. Okay, for the rest of the card, I wanted to keep it simple. So I created a five by five blue note card and I'm stamping a background stamp with Versamark ink and then I'll clear heat emboss it. I'm using one of my favorite new background stamps. This is the My Favorite Things Scattered Surface Background Stamp. This is a great one because it's very subtle. It just creates these tiny little um, marks that kind of add texture to the background. You'll see as soon as I emboss it. But it's a great stamp because it works with any style of card and it just adds a little bit of interest. One of my friends sent me a card with this done with clear embossing powder on a black note card and it looked really cool. The texture was a lot of fun. So now that uh, light up panel is completely done, all we have to do is put some adhesive on the back of it and stick it right to our card. I'll be honest, I wasn't really sure I would like doing these kind of light up cards. I thought it was like a little bit too much work and money to put into a card. However, I gave it a try and I think it's a lot of fun. My kids love it, so we're just gonna make them for special occasions. And you know, it's not something for everybody, but I really wanted to show you because I think it's something really unique that you can do for card making. I did add a little bit of shimmer to my images with a wink of Stella, just so there was a little bit of shine, and that's it. We have a fun interactive card that lights up completely and unique. I think that's a lot of fun. Okay, so if you are interested in the supplies I used, they are linked below in my YouTube description. I bet these dragon stamps will go quickly because they're brand new for my favorite things and they are adorable. But I'll link everything below or you can go to my blog at jennifermaguireinc.com. I have everything there. In the middle are two other interactive card designs that might be interesting to you. Thanks for watching. Once again, I appreciate you stopping by and I hope you'll come back soon.